I was jailed for life in 1995 on account of a story uh, published in the news. The kind of thing that we always experience uh, in Africa, you could be kicked just for writing a story. For writing a story that criticizes not just the man in charge, but even his wife or children. And if you are lucky, well, they sentence you to prison or, you know, but if you are not, <coughs> they kill you. Here I go. I was led to the room with court in progress written on the door. On the left were defense lawyers. On the right were the prosecution lawyers. In front of them was the dock with a military police. To complete the T structure were members of the tribunal in two rows behind a table with two microphones on it. In the center of all this was a wooden bench on which high the accused was positioned. I said to myself, this is a collection of self-deluded Aaron boys, this gang of Abasha's executioners. <clears throat> Some of them were mere criminals, yet they were parading themselves as the guardians of truth. These people, I guess, did not believe in what they were doing. It was merely a show of shameless bootlicking and complete absence of self-worth. But it was only a consciously corrupt <coughs> or morally blind person that will collaborate with the evil schemes of Abacha. The tribunal, according to him, was empowered to try military officers as well as civilians who are not subject to military laws, but the names of the tribunal members and asked. After that, he read out the names of the tribunal members and asked, do you have any objection to the participation of any of the members in your trial? If you have, the tribunal will make a replacement. No, 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 I answered. Introduce all members of the prosecution and the defense. The government had nominated lawyers for me, and so he also introduced them. I turned down the offer as well about, he wanted me to reject, and I said, look, just carry on. In retrospect, I believe that was an error. I should have objected politely to the members of the tribunal and their choice of lawyers for me. I should have objected to being tried by that tribunal. Not that it would have made any significant difference, but it would have been a good way to say, stop, stop this nonsense. I regret missing that opportunity. I knew that even the eloquence of the Mostinis, even if I had that gift, will not get me released from that tribunal. It did not even seem prudent for me to vent my fury openly as I addressed the tribunal. I want your tribunal to prove the charge against me beyond or reasonable doubt. Is the story for which I'm under trial true or false? In what way has the story published in May for which I'm being tried in July, incited Nigerians against the government. In what way has the same story caused the ceremony within the military? If you prove this beyond all reasonable doubt, I will accept your verdict in good faith. Look, 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 look what I said. I've told you why just now. Go out there and buy the latest edition of the news. Maybe and it will still bear my imprint. Does that mean I edited the magazine in my place of confinement? The prosecution then brought in an army officer who under oath testified. I am an avid reader of the news magazine. When I read the copy of the news in question, I felt so bad because it paints the cool plot incident as a hoax. It is as if the magazine holds a strong belief that the government is a liar. I believe this is not true. I, I was irritated by this fellow's pious civility. 
So the following day, of course, the judgment was delivered and I was sentenced to life imprisonment. I ruminated over the judgment pronounced on me. I told myself that if General Sonia Abacha, who was the, 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 the military president at that time, got away with this, he will frame more people. He will also kill more people. Remember that it was the same regime that hanged the writer, Ken Saruguwa. First, with the grim reality of being dumped in jail, the brave face I had put on started to wane. Joseph Pulitzer argued pointedly and robustly about the privileges of journalism. I quote, I quote him properly. The journalist, he said, has a position that is all his own. He alone has the privilege of molding the opinion, touching the hearts, and appealing to the reasoning of hundreds of thousands every day. Here is the most fascinating of all professions. What Pulitzer did not say is that there's a sense in which the privilege of journalism could become a body. For it is this, this same privilege that a dictator desires to have. The capacity to control reason, the capacity to reinvent and affect other people's thinking. This explains why there's always a tension between the good press, the critical press, and the totalitarian state. It made me wonder in those gloomy moments whether journalism can ever be free of repression. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you.